Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us for today's gathering. Um, my name is Matt Barr, Associate Dean in the College of Arts and Sciences, and um, Anne-Marie Cagno uh, could not join us. Uh, she's in another meeting. So on behalf of the, of the Dean, I want to express uh, my appreciation to all of you for joining us for this discussion, and a special thanks to our panelists, both students, uh, faculty, and staff who agreed to come together today and uh, share their experiences and thoughts. Um, I'm anxious to hear from them this hour. Uh, and no offense to faculty and staff, I'm really more anxious to hear from the students after having brief discussions. Um, but given the times we're in, I'm, I'm always anxious to hear uh, from students, how they're doing, what they're experiencing, um, and how they're dealing with all of this uh, we're going through in 2020. So welcome. And today's gathering really is, the purpose is we don't have um, uh, formal presentations, but the idea was to come together and hear from students first and foremost about how they're navigating their lives here at, at Gonzaga during the pandemic. Um, and our goal is really to learn how we can better uh, engage students, uh, how we can be more effective. And even though we're all um, trying to make this work under difficult circumstances, how we can be the best we can be. And uh, I'm going to start by telling you that we, we don't have a set of formal presentations, of course, but we do have a structure. Um, I've got a set of prompts that I've asked our students to think about this week. And that's going to kind of set the stage for all of us to learn uh, from them, how we can kind of overall um, improve the overall student experience. Um, so I'd like to go about the first 20 minutes or so with the student panel and I'll have them introduce themselves in just a moment. And then I think on the back half of the hour, uh, once we get into 20, 25 minutes, uh, I'd like to open this up um, and I have a set of prompts, uh, questions that I wanna uh, ask our uh, faculty and staff and then from there, we can, we can have more of an open discussion. But again, I don't wanna bring a lot of formality to this, uh, but a framework or a structure that we can kind of all operate under. I, I wanna start with the, the panelists though, and do a quick introduction. Um, we have four students with us and a big thank you to them. Uh, here I am saying we, we wanna improve the student experience and think about how we can better engage them. And then I'm, calling them up and saying, hey, can I have another hour of your time? <laughs> and by the way, think about this and be willing to come uh, before an audience and, and open up. So thanks to the students. I'm gonna have them each introduce themselves in, um, oh, I just noticed their first and last names are alphabetical. So in this order, we'll go Brayden, Fese, Gabby, and Taylor. If you could just introduce yourself, uh, tell us what year you are and what you're studying. Braden, you wanna start? Sure. Um, hi everyone, my name is Braden Bell. I am a sophomore biology major with a research concentration. I'm also doing a chemistry minor. Um, I'm involved with like GSB on campus and currently just starting my undergrad research. So yeah, that's me. I say you're up. Hi everyone, happy Friday. Um, my name is Fisay Alango. I am a senior studying biology with a minor in sociology. Um, and like Braden, I'm also involved in GSBA. It's nice to see all of you. Gabby. Hi, I'm Gabby. I'm a sophomore as well. I'm a special ed uh, major with a Spanish emphasis and dance minor, and I'm in GSBA as well. And Taylor. Hi guys, good morning. Uh, my name is Taylor Sipla. I study sociology and communication studies with a minor in solidarity and social justice. Thanks for having me here today. Thank you for joining us. All four of these students are extremely busy. And uh, again, I can't thank you enough for being willing to do this. Um, uh, I'm gonna hold on. Well, no, actually, I'm just gonna do a quick introduction if you could kind of wave uh, uh, faculty and staff. Um, let's see, uh, Mindy Howard from biology. Are you here? 
Okay, Mindy, thanks for joining us. And we'll get to the faculty panel here, as I mentioned later in the hour. Let's see, Matt Lamsma, Dean of Student Engagement. Matt, are you there? There you are, thanks for joining us. And we have um, faculty from Classical Civilizations Department, Amy Pistone. Thanks, Amy. And uh, from Communication Studies, uh, Jonathan Rossing, faculty in Communication Studies. Thanks, Jonathan. All right, since our time is short together, and as I mentioned, I wanna hear a lot from students. So I'm gonna start with them. Um, I'm hoping that uh, you can start with a kind of big open-ended uh, uh, experience that will set the stage for this, uh, telling us about your, how you are navigating your academic work uh, overall, um, thinking about your academic and overall student experience. Um, what is going well um, what's working for you? And then we'll uh, talk about some strategies and challenges. Um, and you're all going to stare at the screen and say, who's going to jump first? So I'm going to start with uh, Fisay. Do you want to start? Yes, I'd love to start. <laughs> um, hmm, what's going well? How am I doing? Yeah. It's definitely been a semester um, for the books. Definitely an interesting semester, an interesting time. Um, it, I think, took me longer to ease into academic work or to really shift gears. I think that the weight of the world at a certain point of <laughs> the semester really felt pretty heavy um, on my shoulders. So I didn't think that that might be like a student experience that like um, is echoed in certain spaces. I think that nobody, I don't think anyone assumed that we'd be here right now or we'd still be deep into a pandemic and that kind of weighs on the way that academics um, are felt. And I know that that's how I felt this semester. I think I'm finally at the point, week 14, wrapping it up where I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm um, on top of things. But I think what really worked well this semester is trying to be communication with my professors and I was really grateful for the professors that were like very gracious <laughs> and understanding. Um, I think that at least for me, it's, I get really overwhelmed and this is definitely a semester of feeling overwhelmed by just everything going on, whether it's academics or extracurriculars or um, the state of our nation. Um, and I was really grateful for the professors that like noticed that I was struggling <laughs> um, and reached out or like were, were kind when I reached out. Um, and I think that that made the difference, so. That's how I navigated it. Brayden, you want to jump in? Sure. Yeah, um, pretty similar to that. It was definitely a huge adjustment. My time management skills definitely got a lot better. That was, I think, the biggest challenge. Like, I wasn't really one to like schedule out like times to study or like times to like work on or watch lecture videos or anything like that. But now, like this year, I have like a separate calendar and everything scheduled out. So that's been kind of a work in progress and navigation. Um, academics, it's, I've really appreciated the professors, like Fase said, like reaching out and like offering their help, especially like with all the stuff going on in the world. Um, yeah, that's, I and mean, with extracurriculars, especially, especially at GSBA, I think we've all benefited from this situation for sure. I think like our organization has gotten closer and um, we've done a lot of good work, so I've been, it's been pretty reassuring to see things in that department. Gabby, you want to, uh, kind of pick up on that thread and maybe talk about some challenges and then what has worked in kind of, um, navigating or addressing the challenges? Yeah, definitely. So this year I'm living off campus. And so I'm lucky enough to have my own room to have my classes in, but I've definitely never been one to enjoy working in my room. My room's kind of more of my relaxing area. So I think that the biggest challenge the start of the year was trying to get myself to actually do work in my room. And like Brayden said, set aside those study times. Um, I've always loved organizing, so I never had a big issue with that. But I think just getting in the mindset in my own bedroom that I need to get all of these things done. Whereas in the past, I would have gone out to coffee shops more often or being um, in class, definitely. I didn't realize how much I paid attention when I was in a classroom versus now, but definitely um, a hard transition that I've gotten 
a hold of, I'm back home now. So that was another transition after Thanksgiving break that I had to switch to trying to navigate my schedule in my house with both of my parents working from home. Um, I think another challenge was probably, Fase touched on this, just communication with teachers. I had some really awesome teachers with communicating what they needed from us, what they wanted from us, but then also understanding that we are all very stressed right now. This isn't the easiest situation for anyone. But then I did have some teachers that kind of just acted like everything was normal, throwing work at us, even more work than they would have in the past. So I think there was two sides to some professors, but I really enjoyed the communication with most of my professors. Taylor, you wanna follow that thread or, or you can start and take it in a new direction that's relevant to you if you'd like? Yeah, sure. I think I'll just echo some of the sentiments that were shared already. Um, it takes a lot of self-discipline and like organization to do school from online, um, especially when you don't have the spaces or the resources that you typically have in a normal year, like walking to office hours or let's say walking to study in Hemmingston or just buy a coffee. I don't know. Um, but like you don't have that same luxury. Right. So I think I've really benefited when my professors um, are like disciplined and organized, similar to me when Blackboard's like clearly accessible, when I know where to find things when I need to find them, um, when the instructions are clearly laid out. Um, and I think all of that structure wise, when it's organized, allows students to, you know, be more disciplined and like actually actively get the work done that they need to get done. Um, additionally, I think the biggest challenge this year with academics is um, sometimes I think at the university we separate um, our academic experience to our human experience, which is very complex. Um, but students are more than just um, an academic student when they step into a space. They're a person um, who are experiencing a lot right now, just like the faculty and everyone else too. Um, and so having Grace, like Fosse and some others mentioned in terms of like sometimes when I have to say no to an assignment, if it means like I'm going to get enough rest, then I do that. Um, and so kind of understanding and meeting students where they are, especially with their mental well-being, I think is super important um, and recognizing that, uh, yeah, we have the same expectation to perform to like a typical year. Like I'm producing a capstone this year um, with one of my favorite professors and it's been super fun. Um, and I'm grateful to be in disciplines where I have a lot of grace and like um, they kind of keep me routed. Right. And so checking in on students personally, I think is really important this year as well. Um, in order to be academically successful in the classroom is making sure that students and big topics like um, the event that happened with BSU's mentioned, the election season, the wildfires, like one of my favorite professors, Dr. Mirage Lloyd, she is really good at like curating a classroom community that transcends just academics. Um, the ability to have a community where we can talk when big things come up and apply it to our course of study um, is very valuable in recognizing like when a faculty member or professor recognizes like I'm having an experience that's more than just the academics means a lot to me as a student um, and so that's something I think that has worked really well for me and also an area of improvement I think among all disciplines. Thank you and I, I also want to invite um, I think we talked about this Tara I don't want to put you on the spot if folks want to put questions in the chat that's an option as well and we can kind of follow that thread as we move through the hour. If you have questions uh, come up or something comes to mind. Yep, um, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so you've talked a little bit about some of the uh, challenges uh, around communication, time management, motivation. Um, did I forget anything? I think I'm hitting the big themes there. Um, what, uh, uh, and you mentioned some challenges. Um, but I want to hear from you. Um, let's go in reverse order, maybe. Taylor, uh, uh, what ideas do you have uh, for improvement? Um, you know, what could uh, uh, we, uh, staff and faculty, think about uh, doing that would, would help you? Sorry, kind of what I mentioned before, I think that the best ways in terms of like um, keeping students motivated and also something that we could definitely improve on is just like 
I think there's a lot of differences in how professors operate based on the class and the course that's being taught. Uh, but specifically when like I brought this to my academic community that I lead and they said like having a unified like Blackboard or online software is like super important um, and having things clearly laid out, which I kind of mentioned. And that's like different among all my professors, I think. Um, another thing is adapting and like having different mediums in which that we present information to students rather than just like continually lecturing or having like um, like a recorded lecture that you watch or lecturing in class, like trying to have more interactive engagement and um, whether that's discussion based, but kind of mixing up those mediums. So it's not like I'm going every Monday, Wednesday, Friday to a course that's just going to be lectured. Like maybe it's one day. Um, one of my classes, we meet two out of the three days. And on the third day, we're watching a documentary or we're listening to a podcast or we're engaging in something different that's outside of just the traditional classroom scope. I mean, I think that's really beneficial for learning this year and also allows us to kind of do it at our own pace and time. Um, and another, I think, area of improvement is just making sure that when a student can't make it to class, that there's tangible resources where they can still get that information. So I think the something that's been really helpful for me um, is when the Zoom lectures are being recorded and I can just go in and access or rewind, even if I miss something during a lecture. Um, but yeah, I think providing different modalities in which we present information and keep students engaged is important rather than just keeping the same thing. Cause like as a university, we've had to adapt a ton due to the circumstances we're in. Um, and so adapting the classroom too, like not trying to just fit in the confines of what it used to be, um, but being creative and adapting the ways that we are presenting information and teaching students, um, I think is really important. I say, I, I see you nodding up and down. You want to jump in on that? <laughs> Um, just nodding because everything Taylor has to say is always um, inspirational. Um, but I think that she really encapsulated a lot of, I think, some of the things that I've been feeling this semester too, and how um, we all are kind of tasked with navigating this interesting, weird environment that we're all in. Um, but I think that an improvement or something I've seen ex exemplified in like one of my classes that I think can be kind of channeled into like other academic spaces is meeting students where they're at. I think a lot of us have talked about that thus far, but I think professors, I've been really grateful for the pro professors this semester who've been honest about like how they're doing and how this is all landing on them. Um, it's kind of strange because she's in the room, but Anne Scott um, is my um, genetics lab professor. And from day one, she just named how we're all feeling and like the stress that comes with, I think, doing a lab that's commonly a wet lab uh, um, online. Like, I don't know how we're supposed to do all this genetic stuff with computer. She acknowledged that and created a space where we could um, feel those emotions, but then also take an active role in kind of curating this class environment. And um, we gave our final presentations yesterday, and I was honestly really sad after it was over because that was like one of the spaces on this like virtual campus where I felt like we all had an active role in kind of creating that classroom environment, even though it was online and most of us were remote for the class. So I think an improvement for a lot of different spheres, like I think we've all mentioned, is having students be an active role in kind of creating what class looks like and acknowledging the fact that I think like students have said, we don't all live in a bubble and we're all affected by the things that are happening in the world. Um, I think a lot of the times academics and like academic excellence is used as a wall between like professors and students to where it's like you're in this space and you're only gonna talk about this space. But I think like my genetics lab this semester is a space where we can be <laughs> honest about how we're doing and how everyone was, um, how everything was landing on them. And I think that that's a student experience that is, or that's an experience for students that I was privileged to have this semester. And I think that other students would be pretty grateful to have it as well. I see Gabby and, and Brayden, I, I've lost track of order, reverse order. Um, and I, I went to Fasse because she, she was so expressive, right? <laughs> She's nodding. So um, I, I don't wanna, um, penalize you for not being the, the big nodder, the expressive people on Zoom. Um, but let's see, uh, I'll go in. Uh, uh, Gabby, you want to jump in on this? Yeah, I think uh, Fase and Taylor both hit very important parts that I think most students are all feeling. Just I, um, I think the biggest thing is communication, kind of emphasizing what Fase was going off about, not only just communicating um, emotional wise, but communicating what their expectations are for class, communicating um, all assignments. I have found that there is sort of a, um, I guess, lack of instructions for some assignments because we do have Blackboard as a resource 
they put all of the information about assignments on Blackboard. But as um, I don't love just getting that information just from Blackboard, I would rather have the teacher go over it in class maybe and just really explain what they're looking for in different assignments or presentations. And again, like what Fase said, just the communication about where we are in the class, where we are in society right now, and just letting it be, letting the classroom become a place where we don't have to set all of our emotions and mental state aside, where we can work our mental state into our academic work as well. Brayden, you wanna jump in on this one? I mean, I'm just gonna be echoing what has been said by Fase and Taylor. Gabby, I mean, the communication is huge for sure. Like, especially with the expectations part. Um, and having like a standardized Blackboard would be incredibly nice because sometimes we have assignments that aren't in Blackboard, but they're still due. Maybe it's like mastering or something. It's not really on the schedule. So that can be kind of stressful. You don't know where or where your next assignment might be due. You might miss it just in the flood of 16 credits worth of online classes. So that can always be stressful. But but I definitely think communication and then like fostering that sense of community and like the online classroom is super important to like make students feel more connected to their professors. So yeah, just kind of what's been said already. And, and for the four of you, I have a, a I think a really a pertinent question from one of our faculty panelists here in the chat, uh, Dr. Pistone. Uh, would love to get your thoughts on how we might be able to create more classroom community, uh, if you have thoughts on that. Um, and as she notes, that's something that we haven't always been able to, to recreate online or, or as effectively as we'd like in some cases. Um, and the pandemic has obviously isolated a lot of people. And um, I think to her point, uh, the last stanza of her, her post here is, are there things that have really worked in your experience? So let's get really concrete. Uh, did I accurately <laughs> summarize that, Amy? Thanks. Yeah, so I'll focus in on that. Are there things that have really worked in your experience with regard to creating a little more community? And what does that look like? If you can give us some uh, concrete experiences. Brayden, go ahead. So I have one specific example that worked and I realize it's not like um, feasible for all professors just based off time. But I we did in my bio 205 class, we did one-on-one -on -one lecture or exams, like an oral exam. Like he would ask us the questions and we would um, say our answers back. But before and after that, it'd be more of like a conversation check up. Like, how are you doing? How are things going? Like, how's, how are you connecting the course material? So I feel like that definitely helped foster that con like community with my professor, which is Dr. Lefcourt, great guy. And um, it was really nice to like, felt like that one-to-one -one relationship like really added value to my education. Well, I'm not sure I'd want to jump at the opportunity to have an oral exam from Dr. Lefcourt. Sounds like you're up to the challenge. <laughs> I give him a hard time. Um, yeah, following that, following that thread, uh, again, or the question posed by uh, uh, Dr. Pistone, uh, Gabby or Taylor or Fase, do you want to jump in on that with a concrete example? Um, I can hop in here. I think something that Braden kind of mentioned is a similar thread or experience that I've had in my capstone class this year. Um, since we're all seniors and we're all kind of experiencing the same thing, trying to produce a capstone in the midst of everything and like creatively getting to have autonomous choice of like what we want to research and what we want to look at. Um, my professor takes time, Dr. Crandall, to like check in on us. So we kind of go around and be like, this is where I'm at academically, but also like we say, this is what I've done on my capstone, but we also have time to say, oh, I'm kind of struggling today, or I'm tired, or this is what I did last weekend, or just share a little bit about us or what's going on too. So it kind of recognizes both that like, oh, we're making progress academically, but we're also people and we're experiencing the world. So I think those ch check-ins are really valuable. Although I know that that's not a frequent thing or maybe time doesn't allow for all courses um, with the material. Um, however, I think another way that's really important is creating a classroom community can be Kind of working at the pace of the class so checking in midway through the semester i've had two of my professors do like mid-semester evaluations um where we got to put in the google form this is working and this isn't working um where i think that was really important it gave students a voice halfway through before the end of the semester because at the end of the semester what are you going to do just change it for the next so i think having students in that process and collaborating and creating the classroom experience is important um yeah so i'd say those check-ins and then 
maybe an eval, one of my other professors, they kind of say we had like a course syllabus or a course calendar at the beginning of the year, but so far we've had to adapt and change things around. Um, so being flexible in that too uh, is really important and what students are learning and wanting to seek more of, I think, kind of creates a sense of classroom community when they're passionate about certain things and we can talk more about those. Those are really good examples and thanks for those um, really specific uh, 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 examples of what uh, faculty are doing. Others? Um, yeah, so in the education department, I've learned that one of my favorite things about the whole education department is how close all the students are with the faculty. And I think it really comes into play at the very beginning of the year, starting the semester off, almost all of my education teachers um, kind of just introduce themselves, not in just the professor sense, but in who they are as a person. And we spent the first week, and I know not all classes can fit this into the schedule, but we started the first week really just getting to know the other students in the classroom, getting to know what the course was gonna be about, getting to know our professors. And we're like taught that tactic to use in our future classrooms. It's shown that if a student enjoys their professor and likes their professor, then they will um, try harder to improve in the class and they don't wanna disappoint that teacher. So I think just starting off the semester with that solid base of a relationship and you can work on that throughout the rest of the semester if it doesn't fit all in one week in the beginning. But um, yeah, just creating that relationship. And another thing that one of my professors was doing this year was checking in, Taylor mentioned this too, checking in the beginning of every single class and just saying, where are we at? How are we? Or even starting with a game. In my biology class, we play categories. So we just have a little laugh at the beginning of class. And so I think just not focusing only on academics in the online classroom is really important because then the students will be more engaged if they enjoy the class. Thanks for that. Um, any other examples you wanna offer? I'll add one really quick. Um, I think just kind of going along with the professors checking in. In my population ecology class, we'll do like a, a poll for how, <laughs> what our understanding is of past like academic concepts for the class that have been like built upon in our like classroom. And my professor, um, Dr. Chang will be like really honest <laughs> with the poll options. So it'll be like, I have no understanding of this concept. I have like a little bit, like don't ask me questions. Um, and source for us to like kind of around in class so then it's a light um it's upper division bio class but then it's a light environment because we can all be honest about what our remembering is of the content um and I think that sometimes upper division bio classes are like scary and daunting and I know that I was pretty scared to step into the room but he's created this space where we can be like honest with him um and then he'll come into all of our breakout rooms and like ask us generally if we understand the content and then work with us. And there's no like shame and not understanding or not grasping things. Um, so I think it's that balance between checking in and actually wanting us to be honest about where we're at. And there have been times where I've been like, I, I don't remember um, that thing, or I have no concept of understanding of that and that's okay in that class. And we all kind of take that and build um, and learn and grow together. So that's how we build community. Thank you for that. I, I want to be mindful of time here. So I want to bring in um, our other panelists. Uh, as I mentioned, we have um, faculty from biology, uh, classical civilizations, um, communication studies, and then the Dean of Student Engagement, uh, Matt Lamsma. Um, I'd like to get uh, some insights from them. Uh, uh, I, I think my basic question for them as we started the week was really, how are you approaching your work and can you highlight some key strategies and approaches that you are thinking about or that you, you are using to engage uh, students um, during these uh, pandemic conditions? And uh, Amy, do you wanna start? <laughs> I would love to. Um... So first of all, I, thank you so much for all the students. I appreciate your time being here and this is so helpful to hear. Um, I would say just a couple of things that I've been trying um, and I've spent a lot of time over the summer and the semester talking to friends and colleagues at other places. Like there's, there's been a lot of brainstorming and I think it's been really useful to talk, uh, you know, on 
group texts and and social media and things and just like doing kind of brainstorming because I think getting getting more ideas is always helpful. Um, a couple things that I think have worked well. I've been uh, took a portion of my my course grade uh, for some of my classes and reallocated it to journals. And so, because um, I don't want to be asking students to do work that they aren't they aren't getting points for, right? They, they, it's just extra work. And I know a lot of classes have have made up for that we're not meeting in person by making extra work. That's something a lot of my students have mentioned. And so I'm trying to be cognizant of. So it took it took things that we would have been doing elsewhere and put that into weekly journals. And that's been such a great way for students to feel like I hear more things that they might not feel comfortable if we were doing check-ins in, in a whole class setting um, that they wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable sharing. But I've been able to hear a lot more just sort of, you know, I'm I'm stressed out about this, um, especially during the lead up to and lingering uh, ongoing resolution of the election, like students feeling like they had a lot of uncertainty and stress. And, and that was a place where it didn't usually come up in class. And I don't want to put students on the spot and ask, like, how are you doing with a global pandemic and fires and politics? And, you know, but um, those those one on one journals and I, you know, kind of write comments back to them. And so it's been kind of a back channel way that we can we can have some more communication. Um, I've been doing a lot of like temperature check uh, polls at the beginning of classes of like from one to five, like five, I'm all things considered, I'm doing awesome to one like, oh God, this sucks. Like <laughs> I am real stressed. I have never been more tired. Um, and it's just a nice way for, for me to see and if the results I think will be useful for the students. Um, you know, I share that I kind of publish those polls for the class. And so it's anonymous, but they get a chance. Like if, if almost all my students are in the same place, I kind of, I, I want them to know that so they don't feel, because I think there's the sense that everyone else is doing better than I am right now. Um, and so that's a thing. I've also, I got rid of most deadlines for my class um, that, you know, things can be due when they're due. Like, here's here is my goal. I would love for you to have it in by this week, but there aren't going to be late penalties. And um, I think that's been something that has, it's made my workload a little more chaotic, but it's, um, my classes are for the most part small enough that having some lingering assignments coming in hasn't been the end of the world. And I think that's been something that, um, you know, students, it hasn't, it hasn't made too much chaos having assignments kind of all over the place and giving students the option. If a week just wasn't a good week, it doesn't mean you're missing all the assignments for that week. You can go back and do them later. Um, so those are some things that um, I, I do have some questions for students later, but those are some things that I think have been working well. So I will, I will wrap it up there. Thanks. And I, and I want to uh, bring um, Matt Lansma, Dean of Student Engagement in um, because uh, we're talking about the classroom, we're talking about temperature checks, and we're learning that, uh, well, from your published polls, that everyone's having a much harder time getting through life than they appear to be. Um, but what does it look like over on the uh, student engagement side and student development side, Dean Lamsma? Yeah, I think very similarly, uh, you know, when our students uh, on this panel are talking about a want and need for balance and see me as a whole person uh, you know, uh, those are the things that we're hearing in student affairs as well. Um, you know, I work mostly with uh, the out of the class experience in housing, student involvement, first year experience, DICE, that kind of thing. That's my, uh, my area. And so, uh, you know, looking at balance of virtual and in person and letting how we structure those things be guided by not my expectation, but the student's expectation. You know, there are some folks who are uh, comfortable in a certain place and other students uh, who are, are less comfortable. And so I think trying to guide that at an individual level more than I've, we've ever done uh, is, uh, uh, is really, really key. Um, the other thing that I wrote down here uh, in, the, in my notes uh, was, uh, we started to celebrate a little bit that we made it to Thanksgiving um, in a mostly in-person or hybrid moment. I think because well, somebody mentioned that uh, uh, early on as, as well. Um, and I'm also starting to realize some of the cost that that has uh, had from a, you know, from a mental well-being uh, standpoint, from a financial standpoint for some, I mean, uh, that that success has not come uh, cost free for students, and I think we got to continue to to recognize and unpack what that means and how long that will stick with us in a post COVID world. 
thanks for that insight. Uh, and I'm going to bring in, um, uh, 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 let's see, Dr. Howard and Dr. Rossing. Uh, uh, I don't want to get too off track here, but uh, and I don't want to be too structured, but key strategies and approaches uh, that you're uh, using to engage uh, students and, um, and how you're thinking about uh, your work and approaching your work. I'll go ahead and go first. Um, and, and thank you for all of these great insights. I really appreciate hearing all of this. Uh, I'll start out by just speaking on the socio-emotional um, aspect of this because I do hear this coming up so often. And one of the things that I tend to say quite a bit to my students as well as to remind myself is we are human beings, not human doings. And so it is important to recognize uh, that although we have all of these tasks ahead of us and it is important to keep moving forward with those tasks, how it is, it, we need to take that time for ourselves and to have those checks. So I appreciate hearing about the temperature checks and, and also really establishing with my students that yes, we have deadlines and yes, we have assignments and yes, we need to continue to keep working forward to the best of our abilities, but recognizing that life is happening and that things are tough right now and, and they're tough for so many reasons. Um, and so I've made it so that students have the ability to reach out to me. And I've written that in my syllabus as well too, that while we do have these guidelines in place to continue to move forward, that life can, can impact that and to just reach out to me. And I've had several students reach out to me and I have made many of those deadlines also uh, soft deadlines. And, and I'm working with students to be able to, to meet them where they're at. With respect to class engagement, I have been um, using many of these mixed modalities that were mentioned earlier too. And so I've been a huge fan of Google. So even though my platform, everything is posted on Blackboard, I have been trying to make my courses, especially my lecture courses, as interactive as possible with Google Slides so that I can communicate with students in the slides. I can update uh, notes if there's questions that arise in class uh, with, with a particular lecture slide, for example. I can modify that um, with the students. We will use, uh, I've actually used Google Slides um, for presentations where I give students uh, each a slide if they're doing group work, they can import that in. I've used Google Jamboards in class for interactive uh, aspects, um, quizzes that way. And I have found that using some adaptability with the quizzes has been helpful as well too, um, to be able to use practice over and over with that. So retrieval has been really important to try to, to, to work with that. Um, and I've also been utilizing a new uh, platform known as Pear Deck. I don't know if you've used that, but it also is a way to make our slides interactive together too. So trying to bring in as many different ways that I can engage students. I find one of my biggest challenges is not reading that energy in the room, like that, that nonverbal communication. I really miss that if I'm, if I'm teaching virtually. And so um, by trying to have as many opportunities to engage in communication and to receive feedback is, is ultimately where I'm going to, with that. But again, just I, I focus so much on trying to just make sure that we're we're all in this as 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 people, as human beings, not human doings. Wow. Okay. I think I slipped into pandemic mode and became a human doer for several months. <laughs> Jonathan, you want to jump in on that? Sure. Um, I, I largely echo everything everyone else has said um, uh, in terms of the, the, I would say the overarching theme for me is just the need to, to be a full human and to recognize everyone else's full humanity, right? And to like all of, I think everything I've tried has been grounded in that, um, recognizing that this is, this is hard for everyone. It's hard for us. It's, and, and so one thing I've tried, I've done probably more than I've ever done before is be really actually candid and vulnerable about where I am um, and what I'm experiencing throughout the semester, right? And I've had weeks where I've just been like, Look, this, this is a really crap week and I'm not able to bring 
everything I would normally bring right now. And let me just be honest about that, right? Uh, trying to normalize that, I think, for my classes uh, as a as a way of saying like, yeah, it, it's a that's okay. It's a, it's okay to not be a human doer, right? Um, and I know that's not always safe or comfortable for our, our various social identities and positionalities, but to the extent that we can, I think that's usually useful. Uh, some really specific things I've tried to do are, are I, I allocated about 50% of all of the activities and assignments I do to sort of ungraded assignments, where if students did it and put forth a good faith effort, um, they just got credit, right, just flat out. So to try to alleviate some of the pressure and stress um, on some of the little smaller things that we do throughout the semester where I could still give feedback, I could still use it sort of as my own sort of personal classroom assessment to see where students were at and understanding material, but to alleviate some of the anxiety and stress, you know, I didn't need my class to be one more thing adding to that. Um, and then all of those were ungraded ones were sort of build up to something that would be graded, but by the time they got to that graded thing, then they'd had several uh, iterations of feedback um leading up to a thing that then students might feel a little bit more comfortable and confident in uh performing and doing because they had that set up uh, leading up to the graded performance um similar to to amy i didn't do all the all the way away with deadlines but um i in, have done a sort of flex time policy where I've said, you know, you, you have 10 days of, of flex time or, or whatever, you know, I, I'm probably going to expand that next semester uh, and just say, you know, use them however you like. If you want to turn in an assignment, one assignment two days late and one assignment five days late and another assignment three days late, cool, do whatever you need to do, right? Like if this is a crazy week, if something happened with family, if you have you know, four different activities, big activities in classes, this can help, you know, if that can help alleviate, again, some of the pressure and anxiety that we're all experiencing, awesome. Um, so that, I, I found that to be pretty helpful and um, in some sort of, you know, feedback things that I've done throughout the class, students have mentioned that that was pretty helpful. Um, I, I was also going to mention just some basic classroom community things that I've tried to do. Uh, that seem like they've been helpful. Some students have commented that they've been useful. Um, one thing as an example is I just start, I'm gonna share my screen for like just a second. At the beginning of every class, I'll throw up a slide like this um, with some random question that's really just totally disconnected from content and just asking students to, you know, add something to the annotation board um, using the Zoom features of annotation. Or I've done polls, you know, like this or that polls, like this or that being like pancakes or waffles, you know, summer or winter. And just like we start the class with that quick little like two minute poll and then have another quick two minutes to reflect on like, oh, look at where we all landed on these things. Just simple community building things that don't have to take an inordinate amount of time, but that students have said like it, it's helpful just to have that momentary pause to break and tap into something totally outside of the you know intellectual academic sphere and see us sort of connecting on very simple basic levels um i've also started a lot of classes with um just sort of a breakout room warm-up where we we just immediately go into a breakout room um and again just a, a sort of random fun question like you know what's a movie series movie or series that you like can always watch without ever getting tired of you know and I send everyone off to a breakout room for three minutes in groups of four and we just start with that and I've sort of framed it as like this is just a chance to warm up in terms of like talking like getting getting used to talking to people we don't know in this weird format um and I think that has helped with then the community and engagement and discussion uh when when we're turning to the content, right? Because we've started with sort of that three to five minute warm up conversation about something just fun and community building. Uh, those are some things that I think, I think I've seen be helpful. Um, and those are also things that students have commented on, like I say, in some, some feedback that I've gotten uh, that seem to be working, so. Thank you that, <clears throat> I think all of you offer a uh, a, a real sense uh, or a glimpse into your uh, classroom and how you're thinking about this. And then on the student affairs side, how you're thinking about navigating this as well. I'm curious, um, Jonathan, uh, I, I think someone commented in the, in the chat, oh, it was um, a core director. You always inspire us to think about play in the classroom. Um, one question that comes to mind for 
our uh, panelists, uh, employee panelists, uh, that prompts me, how do you, um, I think it was your slide, Jonathan, about thinking positively or about something that makes you happy. But then I'm kind of juxtaposing that with Dr. Pistone's, uh, I think you made a passing comment about, what did you say, pandemic, fires, uh, <laughs> It was it was something biblical, right? <laughs> Terrible biblical, you know. Um, uh, oh, the Zoom at, uh, attack on the Black Student Union. I mean, all of these things. So, how do you think about kind of balancing your classroom or opening or, or providing space to kind of focus on some very negative things, right? And 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 process those as you know against uh, the positive piece. Um, can you give me some insight in, into that or kind of how you've handled that or navigated that in your, your classrooms and spaces? Hey, I can, oh, Amy, you, you were about to start. Go ahead. I, <laughs> I was just gonna say, I think, I think I could be, I, because I'm still pretty new to the university, I think, um, Sometimes when there's a, a campus-wide, so like we had the this attack on the VSU, um, not not necessarily feeling like I have a real proficiency with what different groups and where I can how I can point students towards different things. And I would say um, one of my classes, the we talk a lot about stories and identities and things in the class. It's a it's a Greek mythology class, and um, it was more relevant to the, that class content, but even still, I felt like we didn't entirely have the tools, like we hadn't been building the tools as a class to really talk about race um, in, a, in a serious and thoughtful way. And so I, I put that, I don't know, I mean, I, th I think I could have done a better job, but I invited students privately to, like they had a, they could do a response, um, a writing assignment, a journal thing, but um, I, I worry sometimes, especially when I hear from um, students who have marginalized identities in whatever way that in a class where they're, the, they're marginalized or minoritized in terms of their identity, um, saying we're going to talk about race, gender, sexuality, um, and, and there being a lot of pressure on those students um, as, as not necessarily being something that's helpful to say, like, let's talk about race and you know, there's there's um, a handful of students are going to be expected to carry more of, of the, the weight in that conversation, which is the last thing that, that I want to do. And so um, I've mostly done that as if you want to, you can, here's a writing response that you can do, at, or there's another option available. And I don't know, um, I guess this is kind of a question, one of the, the questions I jotted down for the students of how helpful is it for classes to be asking us to look at and and kind of return to some of these things that that are surrounding us at all times or do you want classes to potentially be a break from that in some ways like I know it's going to vary on the class and the professor and the student but um, I mean that's something I kind of balance of you can't get away from the pandemic um, should we also be talking about plague in Greek mythology or do you maybe want to break from thinking about the effects of a society-wide plague um, and you know same with a lot of these kind of heavier issues and I, I would kind of love to hear students thoughts on that because I go back and forth a lot on what I think is going to be the best option for for a class that's a good transition uh, let's open it up to the student panelists on that question and and work from there I think that there are like certain current topics that I I almost feel like professor I want professors to feel obligated to talk about like I think that race and ethnicity and those things that are happening in current day and like the zoom attack on classes or on the BSU like things like that are almost at least for me as a student I feel like non-negotiable and I know that this semester I've been disappointed in some of my classes where um, that hasn't really been talked about because I feel like that fails to, I think, acknowledge the complexity of like the total Zag experience and it more so like centers and focuses on the white Zag experience, which is tough. And um, I think that, especially like as a student of color in the sciences, I especially look towards my professors to really talk about those things. So I've been really grateful for the professors that have talked about it because it almost seems like in those spaces that time is like really valuable and almost too valuable to where it like 
the science content like supersedes um, the day-to-day -day lived experience. Um, so it's shocking when professors <laughs> bring up like race and ethnicity and social justice issues. And I feel like it should just be like a, a norm, but I think that it's also interesting because I have that like duality in my degree that I'm pursuing where I have that biology portion and then the sociology portion to where it's like the norm to talk about things that are not um, course content in my uh, social classes, but then it's like not as really the norm to talk about in that in my science classes. So it's that like night and day experience whenever I like switch a Zoom room um, to where I've just had to navigate that this is an expectation in like one portion of campus, whereas it's not really an expectation in another portion of campus, which is very difficult um, as a Black student on this campus that really feels very strongly about a lot of things and is looking towards like um, faculty and my professors to really also um, kind of support in that way. But then like, I think when it comes down to talking about COVID, it's like, okay, as like a bio major, I'm gonna have to talk about the population and the um, persistence of um, the virus. So I think that that's something I expect in my classes, but then it's also like a little bit exhausting um, in December of 2020 to talk about COVID. Um, so I guess the experience kind of just varies, but that's how it kind of lands on me. Well, I'll turn it, given your comments, Fase, I'll turn it back to the, the employee panel. Uh, how did you address um, uh, uh, the attack on Black Student Union, or, or did you try to do that? And I know we have good representation across disciplines here, but someone want to jump in and give us insight into how they thought about that vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, you know, balancing course content, you know, dis uh, delivering um, uh, learning outcomes. <laughs> Uh, experience and outcomes in your in your discipline and then addressing the whole uh, uh, person needs of our students. I'll jump in and say that I, I absolutely addressed it. And I think um, it, on one hand, I, in communication studies, most of uh, the classes we teach lend themselves to having conversations about power, uh, systems of power and privilege and, and attacks like what happened this semester. But I, I also want to um, call out uh, Dr. Robin Kelly's comment uh, in the in the chat because that's I think really on on point even if it's even if there's not a disciplinary or content like angle I think even just naming it you know um, this horrible thing happened I'm sure it's effect I know it's affecting many of us and and most students in this class and and honestly Yes, it absolutely affects our um, students of color, but also so many white allies who are good friends with our students. You know, so like the, it, it's not, and that's not about like calling or isolating out any one, you know, one person in a class or, or whatnot. It's about acknowledging and naming an emotional state and an emotional reality. Um, and uh, as Dr. Kelly said, acknowledging the harm. And even if it, and I think. For, I heard from students, even if they didn't engage in an extended conversation about it in class, even just naming that thing and maybe having an invitation to say, reach out to me if you'd like to talk more and here are a few other resources that, you know, consider to consider looking into for support um, goes such a long way to what we've said this whole session uh, about just acknowledging people's full humanity, acknowledging that we're more than just a, a brain in a class, right? We, we are whole people experiencing, uh, in this case, a, a tremendous act of hate uh, and, you know, verbal violence, so. And thanks for that. And, and I think, uh, Mindy, you, I, th I saw your microphone <laughs> shift. You wanted to jump in. Yeah, I'll, I was just going to mention as being one of the one of the STEM professors that I I have a 9 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So so early, I think early on for myself, I was still processing and figuring what what this what this incident meant uh, for our students and for our community. Um, and so we did not have a conversation in class about it, but I had sent I had sent electronic communication out to my students, as well as pointing to resources within the STEM fields. Um, and so, with that said, it is there is a sort of cultural expectation within STEM that is very disparate, typically in in terms of sticking with the material. 
Um, so, so there is a feeling of almost, um, I don't, I don't know the right words to be able to describe it, but it, 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 it is something that we have to draw ourselves out to be able to engage in those conversations and yes, to acknowledge that harm and to, to acknowledge how it is impacting individuals. So again, um, recognizing that those, that all of our community is impacted by this and how that can, uh, and then through that, just recognizing too, that's going to have an impact on, on, you know, academic productivity throughout the week and beyond as well too, and, and, and being cognizant of that. And thanks for that. Um, are there questions uh, our students, uh, panelists want to ask uh, our um, faculty and staff panelists, anything that's come to mind during our time together here today? Um, I think looking at one of the questions in um, the chat about breakout rooms, that's a different, or it's definitely a different topic than what we've had to talk about in the past. But um, I think it really just depends about breakout rooms. Like I said, if this professor spends enough time getting to know the students and letting the students get to know each other, then breakout rooms can work really well. But if um, I have a class that I don't really know anyone in, and so when we are in a breakout room, everyone is definitely very silent, definitely very awkward. I'm less likely to um, speak out in breakout rooms if we haven't built that community. But then on the other hand, I think breakout rooms are really, um, important in some classes, like in my Spanish class, we get broken out into breakout rooms because normally we would be speaking to each other in class. And so I think it depends on the environment of the class as well as what the class topic is. And thanks for that. Um, boy, um, I'm finding myself disappointed that our hour is, is nearly over. Um, I'm learning so much and uh, any other, um, I'm going to open this up for um, uh, all the panelists. Uh, anything you want to impart to us? Uh, questions, comments, uh, things you hope for for spring? Um, mindful of the fact we only have uh, two or three minutes left. Um, I would love to just hop in here and say um, that we are only four students with our own four different perspectives with the identities that we carry. So I definitely recommend like doing either the like really taking your course evals to heart and trying to see like directly for the course that you teach um, or your own sphere of influence, like how that changes for you specifically, because um, we're only four student perspectives and I'm sure other people have other I engaging ideas too from the course that you directly taught. So that's a great suggestion. Thank you. Others? One thought that I had earlier too that I had forgot to mention that I think has been really valuable for many of my students is to also build in ways to hold one another accountable. And so I've incorporated in um, having accountability partners um, and we've had some ways in the beginning of the semester where we have gotten to know one another on an individual level just based on our our personal interests, our, our career interests, and, and then through those um, form, whether self-matched or matched through facilitation, um, to hold students accountable with one another through weekly check-ins, through uh, assignments that they complete with their accountability partner. Um, and, and those have developed into some really strong friendships. And so I think that has been another thing that has been really helpful for both uh, personal and academic purposes. Thank you. Um, I, Jonathan, I you, you did you want to have a last word here or close to the last word? <laughs> I'll be real. I'll be real quick. But since we're nearing end, one thing I will say, you asked earlier about joy um, and how do we also find a joy in like all of the like, I'm stressed and I'm overwhelmed and the world is falling apart. Uh, so one thing that I kind of committed to is, this semester was uh, ending every class with moments of joy. Um, I'm gonna share my screen again for just a second, if that's okay. Um, and I had I had a little joy mascot, the squirrel. And like every class, we would just end with um, fun pictures or things. Uh, so you know, squirrels landing like superheroes, chickens wearing 3D printed T-Rex arms, um, 
fun memes that were like calling out like this year sucks, you know, so those type of things. Um, and it just, you know, even when we were having hard conversations, it was good, I think, to say like, look, this has been a really hard and difficult conversation and we don't want to diminish those emotions. And also let's try to find a moment to smile, right? Let's try to find a moment to look at something that's beautiful or joyful or, or happy in the world. Um, and so ending every class with things like that and inviting students to share those as well, I think uh, helped set a certain tone for community in the class. Um, I often hear the term these days, dumpster fire. I didn't think I would see a porta potty fire when I woke up this morning. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, makes me want to come to your class. <laughs> um, we, we are out of time. Um, again, I can't thank all of you enough. This has been really, really enlightening. Thanks to the, our students, our faculty and staff panelists. Um, would love to do this again. Uh, and we want to keep um, uh, information flowing. And so if you think of anything after this meeting that you want to suggest and you're out of time to put it in the chat, I'm happy to take um, emails, uh, anything that comes to mind and, and get those out to folks uh, in the college and elsewhere. And um, oh boy, I don't even know how to end this. Um, I, a Maya Angelou quote comes to mind and I, I shouldn't do it on the fly. I think I know it by heart, but it, it's um, uh, do the best you can until you know better. Uh, then when you know better, do better. And um, Knowing makes us better at doing. And I'm grateful to all of you for coming and helping me get a little more in the know. I think we're all a little more in the know and we're on the path to doing a little better in some areas. So thank you again for your time and have a great weekend. Be well, everyone. <laughs>